So what is Vime coding? Oh, well, this one's gonna annoy a few people. Here we go. These days, you might see the phrase vibe coding in various online publications, newspapers, and podcasts. Vibe coding has arrived for businesses. The rise of vibe coding. Vibe coding is coming for engineering jobs. It first appeared in February 2025 in a tweet by Andre Karpathy, who is one of the original founding members of OpenAI. He was also director of AI at Tesla. And he described an approach to programming where you'd use a generative AI like GPT or Claude or Gemini to help you write code and build software applications or websites, but, but where you do this in a very improvisational, exploratory way, and you drive it by just writing prompts in everyday natural language. You're not looking too deeply at the actual code being generated. You're just focused on the results and how you feel about the results you're getting, the vibes that you get. And then, instead of debugging code line by line, you just have a continual conversation with the AI to get the results closer to the idea that's in your head. So with vibe coding, you can create all sorts of things. A little bit of code to run on your own desktop or laptop, a quick automation tool, even a whole website if you push it. But it is often something small, lightweight, and throwaway could be just a single web page. So let's say I've got a friend who runs an interior design company and she needs a website. Now, I could try to vibe code the entire website in one go, all the pages, all the forms, all the galleries, but I might just say, let's just start with the homepage. We'll do a little work, we'll see what the AI gives us, we'll make a few tweaks if it's close, or we'll just throw it away if it's wrong. So here's the prompt I'm going to use. Create a website landing page for an interior design company called Void and Volume. We specialize in home renovations in a modern, brutalist style. The landing page should include a header with the company logo, a hero section with a catchy headline, a carousel of images, a testimonial section, a call to action section, and a footer with links and social media icons. So notice that I am being specific. I'm not just saying, duh, make me a website, but I'm not focused on the technical specifics. I'm not using words like HTML or CSS or JavaScript. I'm not talking about specific fonts or how many columns there are or whether the text should be left or right aligned. It's more about a, hey, this is the kind of thing I want. Let's see what happens. Now, I could use this prompt in pretty much any generative AI like ChatGPT or Anthropic Claude, but there are a lot of companies that now focus on this kind of use of AI. Companies like Lovable, V0, Bolt, and Replit. I don't have a particular favorite, but I have to use something, so here I'm going to use V0. I'll paste in that prompt and I'll let it begin. It's going to take a few minutes, so while it's running, let me clear something up. First, Vibe coding is not just a generic term for using AI in programming. Let me say that again. Vibe coding is not the same thing as anyone using AI as a coding assistant. Because you can use AI in programming in an extremely deliberate way, very intentional, very disciplined, very focused on the exact lines of code and where you're guided by design documents and specifications. Vibe coding is different. It's more of a mindset. It's a, hey, I've got an idea. Let's see if we can coax the AI into building it. No specs, no documents, just you, the AI, and the vibes. And let's be clear, vibe coding didn't actually begin in February 2025. That's when the phrase arrived, but people were already doing this. We just didn't have a great name for it. Now, you can argue that maybe vibe coding isn't a great name for it. A lot of people dislike the term. It sounds trivial. And the basic idea of vibe coding does evoke a lot of strong opinions, shall we say. But let me go back to that original tweet, because one of the things Andre Karpathy said about this approach is it's not too bad for throwaway weekend projects. Nobody is seriously suggesting we vibe code a banking application or an ambulance dispatch system. Now let's go back to that viewer's ear and see what it's done. It's taken my prompt and it's now created that landing page. It's defined a color scheme. It's generated text. It's created some galleries with mock images. It's created the quotes. It's created a footer. It's done what I asked. I might think the all caps here, the hero section is a little too harsh and brutal. So I'll tell the AI to soften this and wait while it makes those changes. 
And okay, there's still a lot we might do before we put this live on the web, but just in a few minutes, we're off to a good start. Now, there's a lot of people that think that vibe coding means sloppy or lazy, but it's more about permission. Permission to skip the ceremony and the formality and just jump straight to a prototype and treat the AI like improvising on a musical instrument. Yeah, sometimes you hit the wrong note and sometimes you get a riff worth keeping. Now, does this mean you should trust what you get from vibe coding? Absolutely not. As an example, let's say I think, you know, I've got a folder full of photographs on my computer and I know there's a bunch of duplicates. Could I vibe code an application to go through the files, find the duplicates and delete them? Sure. Now, would I just hit run on that vibe coded application? Oh, hell no. That is a risk I would not be willing to take. But there is a useful business angle. Vibe coding can be very useful for creating proof of concepts or demos. We well, could walk into a meeting and say, hey, I threw this together over the weekend, rather than I built some mock-up using PowerPoint. You could actually have a demo. This is the kind of thing I'm talking about. But we have to remember, a demo is one thing. Turning a demo into a viable production app is an entirely different mountain to climb. So when you hear someone say vibe coding, think fast, disposable, exploratory, not production ready, not mission critical, just a fun way to explore what's possible, but still knowing the serious work starts after the vibe. And yes, some people consider this to be a terrible practice, and they're not wrong if you confuse it with genuine intentional software engineering. But as long as you know the difference, it is an incredible tool. It's a sketch pad. And it's a surprisingly useful idea if you treat it with the right amount of caution.